This is another one about volumes by slicing. What we have here is a tetrahedron, uh, not a perfectly regular tetrahedron. It's got vertices at the origin in three-dimensional space. I've got x, y, and z axes here. Z is x is coming out towards us. This is a three-dimensional picture. Uh, so the origin, 0, 0, 0, uh, and then 2, 0, 0, and then 0, 4, 0, and 0, 0, 6. So four vertices make this four vertex, four vertex four sided uh, object tetrahedron. And we want to calculate the volume of that. And so our principle uh, for almost any kind of volume using calculus is the whole is the sum of its parts. That doesn't do much calculationally, but it gets you in the right mindset for sure. And then you have to say, well, how am I slicing this up into parts or dividing it into parts? And we're going to do slices here. Um, and that's the most common thing, but it's not the only way. Uh, well, we need to systematically slice it up into pieces where we know what the thickness of each slice is and we know the cross-sectional area of each slice. And that's going to, we're going to have to have some variable that labels the slices. Well, in this case, we could actually use any one of the variables, but we'll use x because it's a little bit more standard. So what we're going to do is we're going to slice it. So x is coming out of the board here. We're going to slice it with slices parallel to the board from x equals 0, which is the yz plane there, coming out toward us. And they're going to get smaller and smaller until they hit x equals 2. So let me just draw a representative slice there. It's going to be something like this. It's going to be a triangle with a little tiny bit of thickness. I'll exaggerate. OK. And as usual, the thickness, its uh, we don't really get to, to choose what we call the thickness, because the thickness is simply the difference between the x value of the front side of the slice and the x value of the back side of the slice. It's a small change in x. And if we think about it as sort of an infinitesimal change in x, it's going to be dx. Okay, And then the cross-sectional area of that triangular slice, we're going to call a of x. And so the total volume of that is cross-sectional area times thickness, uh, just like in the previous, in, well, in other cases, like in the video I just did. And that's going to be um, the volume, that's going to be our more explicit version of dv. So in this process, we always take something and we make it more and more and more explicit until we get something that's absolutely a, just a one variable calculus problem and we can actually integrate it. But we're, we're, we're getting there. So we've chosen a variable to slice it up with. We've chosen that it's going to be a bunch of slices that are uh, sliced perpendicular to the x-axis, and that in, is always going to mean that dx is going to be our thickness. That means that x is going to label which slice is which. Uh, it's kind of a bookkeeping device in a way. And then a of x is something we still need to calculate explicitly, which is going to be the cross-sectional area of each slice. OK, so now that can be a little tricky sometimes. Um, and often you're going to need to, to have some other two-dimensional pictures to help you with that. So here's. Um, let's see, I think we don't really need all this. Here's one way to do that in this case. Um, the base of this thing is this triangle down here. And every one of these slices is a right triangle that is based on a segment that lives in this two-dimensional triangle in the xy plane. And what's really, really important is that everything here is about straight lines and proportionality. This little slice in front here, really close to x equals 2, or the very, very back slice that goes 0, 4 by 6, those are all similar triangles. Okay, So all these slices are similar triangles. That's not going to happen in every slicing volume problem, but anything involving cones, pyramids, tetrahedra, stuff like that with, with lots of straight lines, that's going to be something to look for. OK, and so if we can get one volume or one area, like for one value of x, all the rest should be pretty easy. They're going to be proportional, but we need to know what the proportionality factor is. OK, so that means it's a really good idea to draw the base, that base triangle. So that's going to be in the xy plane. So I've kind of rotated this around, so you're kind of looking at the xy plane from the top, but in the usual way where x is to the right. And then that's uh, going x is 2 and y is 4. So each one of these slices is going to be based on a little sliver here. 
So this is a very, very common thing, is that even though the three-dimensional object is what we're actually going for, we're going to draw a two-dimensional picture that encodes a lot of the information. In particular, this two-dimensional picture that's got an X in it is going to help us say, hey, you know what, the slices start with X equals zero, progress, 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 until X equals two. So in fact, right now, we could already say what the limits in X are, and that's a big deal. This is supposed to be a definite integral with definite numerical limits. And that's just what is the smallest value x can ever have and what's the biggest value x can ever have. Okay, we also see that dx coming in as the, the thickness of the slice, but this is, this is kind of projected down onto the xy plane. Okay, and this is really important. I really need a measurement. For a random x value, we need to know the y as a function of x. Because that's how big the base of this actual triangle is. We really want to get this standing up triangle. But all of those guys, we got a bunch of different ones. They have different slivers, like this, this segment here is a base, or this segment, or this segment over here. And we need to know how big that is in terms of x. OK, that's not too hard. We just need the equation of this line, y as a function of x. It's the line that goes from y equals 4, from uh, 0, 0,4 to 2, 0. Easy enough uh, to see that that's 4 minus 2x. So exercise for the listener. OK, so that's really great. Okay, so these are all, now back to this three-dimensional picture, all of these slices are similar triangles to each other, and the base of each of those triangles is given by 4 minus 2x, and this is what you usually expect, is it's not just a number, it's a function of x. Which triangle slice am I talking about at any given, given instant? Okay, then we just need to know the height of that sucker, use 1 half times base times height, and we're going to be good. Okay, so this is the length of the base of the slice. OK, now what about the height? Well, that's where we can use the similar triangles thing. Uh, let's just draw maybe, it's going to be very similar to this picture, but just taking out, taking out some of the extra stuff. OK, now this is going to be a YZ picture. Very, very common, as I said that you're going to analyze a three-dimensional picture by different two-dimensional pictures. You've probably done this before in some cases when you kind of get more advanced in geometry class or like a tri trigonometry uh, pre-calculus class where um, you're doing a three-dimensional problem, but really it actually amounts to just uh, having a couple of two-dimensional pictures and knowing how they crucially connect. Okay, so this is just the back slice, that very last one. Okay. And the key is that that's similar to all the variable slices, bit small to big, and it's in a 6 to 4 ratio. And so the height is always just 3 halves times the base. Okay, so that means that a variable slice, now I'll go back to this three-dimensional picture, this we know, this length here is 4 minus 2x, groovy, okay. This is just 3 halves times 4 minus 2x. 1 half times that height times that base length is going to be our a of x. Okay, so purposely I wanted to do one that's not an uh, object of rotation, which is a very standardized kind of thing you see in books, and where we actually had to do some work and do this process of combining a couple of two-dimensional pictures to make a 3D picture. But each step, hopefully, you can see, was just, hey, analyze a triangle, turn it into algebra, analyze another triangle, get the area formula, and we're good. Okay, so we're going to have, let's see, it's one-half times... Let's see, this actually simplifies to 6 minus 3x. I'll write it that way. Although I'm going to rewrite it in another way in a minute. Okay, so that's 6 minus 3x. That's a half. And then the base, 4 minus 2x dx. Okay, this is the end of the setup phase. We have uh, said whole sum of its parts. We chose to do a slicing strategy, which means each part, the dv, is an a of something d something, here x. We got the limits, which was always imp important as well. And then a lot of the work was, hey, what is the area, the cross-sectional area of each of these slices? Now this is, you could totally hand this to somebody who has just barely learned integrals. Uh, let me rewrite it in a little bit of a nicer way. These guys uh, are both proportional to 2 minus x. This is 1 half, this is a 3 times 2 minus x, and that's a 2 times 2 minus x. So that leaves a 2 minus x times 2 minus x. I'm going to flip it because it's going to be squared, so it's x minus 2 squared. So another little algebra you can check. Oh, and then the 1 half cancels there. 
Okay, so it's just integral 0 to 2, 3 times x minus 2 squared. And we are so almost done. I kind of want to leave the 3D picture. I feel like sometimes people are a little nonplussed by these examples, because like if you can't actually even picture what you're calculating the volume of, it can be a little weird to just say, well, what does this number mean? So, But we know what it is. It's this, this is tetrahedron. Okay, so volume is, take the 3 out, integral 0 to 2 of x minus 2, quantity squared dx. That's a super simple u sub. And it just becomes 3 times 1 third times x minus 2 cubed from 0 to 2. Hey, that cancels out. How nice. And um, that just ends up being 8. Dude, you can check it. Okay. And indeed, uh, if you have this predetermined formula for like the volume of a, a tetrahedron with, with a right angle down here at the corner, um, you could check that. Most people don't actually know that, but um, but it does turn out to be 8. Okay, so that's an example of uh, volumes by slicing where you do really have to do some geometric work to figure out what the area of each slice is.